you hope, uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's gonna try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f yourself. But go f yourself. Is that clear? I hope it is. Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience. So Mark Zuckerberg um, now is coming out and he is absolutely terrified. I mean, uh, he's apologetic about uh, the censorship and the federal government uh, colluding with Facebook. He's, he's sorry about that. And he says that he would never do it again. But he's not going to uh, push any candidates anymore. You know, he's scared of elections all of a sudden. He's terrified. He's terrified. He's not going to be putting those machines, those ballot boxes, and he's not going to do any of that stuff. The $400 million, I think he owes us that $400 million. Mark Zuckerberg, if you're really sorry about what you did, you should take that $400 million uh, and you should invest it into making America great again. If you're really sorry, if you really want to apologize to the American people, uh, that's what you should be doing. That You should put your money where your mouth was. All right. OK, uh, it's because we don't trust you and we don't care. In my opinion, I think Mark Zuckerberg belongs in jail. OK, that's what I think. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. Uh, the election interference, him and Jack Dorsey suppressing the Hunter Biden a laptop story, interfering in the 2020 election on the highest level possible, uh, using social media to do so. Man, Mark Zuckerberg's got a lot of problems, okay? He's got a lot of problems uh, nowadays, and he's getting humbled. Uh, it's great to see. It's good to watch, but I wouldn't be satisfied until he's in jail, honestly, in my opinion. Uh, but I want you to look at these news clips because it's going to go into great detail about exactly what's happening uh, in the headlines with Mark Zuckerberg. Take a look at these. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg is making headlines saying that he regrets the social media company giving it a pressure from the Biden administration to censor COVID content during the pandemic. In a letter to the House Judiciary Committee published yesterday, Zuckerberg said he would push back if it were to happen again. He said he regrets the decisions made in 2021 to remove certain content, including humor and satire from Facebook, Instagram, as well as WhatsApp. The White House defended its approach in a statement saying, quote, when confronted with a deadly pandemic, this administration encouraged responsible actions to protect public health and safety. I think Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg feeling bad, yeah, feeling bad for caving to the Biden-Harris White House, who he admits pressured him and his company into censoring COVID content. Zuckerberg writing, quote, in 2021, senior officials at the Biden administration, including those from the White House, repeatedly pressured our teams for months to censor certain COVID-19 related content, including humor, satire, and express significant frustration when we did not meet their demands. I believe the government pressure was wrong and I regret that we were not more outspoken about it. GOP Congresswoman Laurel Lee sits on the House Judiciary Committee and this is a big moment for her. What do you take from this, uh, this, this confession? Well, first and foremost, this is a great victory for the First Amendment. For Mr. Zuckerberg to come out and acknowledge that information was suppressed uh, about COVID, everything, when we saw President Trump and people like Governor DeSantis trying to share information with the public about the efficacy of therapeutics, about lockdowns and whether they were working, you know, at the time they were vilified. And, and the information from people who had opinions was suppressed. And to see Mr. Zuckerberg acknowledging this is really important. It shows the lengths that the Biden administration went to try to shut this information down. And the other thing that he mentions in this letter that's really critical is an acknowledgement that the Hunter Biden laptop story was suppressed. And that's something that we have spent so much time in judiciary working on and trying to bring to light is that we have 51 intelligence officers basically lie to the American people and try to cast this as Russian disinformation when it wasn't. And that information was suppressed in the lead up to the election. Uh, so it's very important for us to be able to show, mm. you know, these are the real facts of what was going on then and the links to which this administration was going to try to hold back this information from the American people. But remember, when the laptop was out there, President Trump was president. So somehow, the challenging party had more sway with our, the FBI and other agencies than the one in power, which is bizarre. 
Uh, meanwhile, the White House just given us this statement on this. When confronted with a deadly pandemic, this administration encouraged responsible actions to protect public health and safety. And, you're, and our position has been clear and consistent. We believe tech companies and our private actors should take into account the effects their actions have on the American people while making independent choices about the information they present. So if you bring up something like ivermectin, that's being irresponsible. In whose eyes? In, in, a, in some officials' eyes? In other people's eyes, it didn't. That's the big question. If you went against what they thought was right, then you're wrong until further notice. That's a bad precedent. It absolutely is. I mean, the whole idea of the First Amendment is that it allows us to express contrary sure. ideas, to bring those out into the public square and let the public get to the bottom of what's the correct information. And what's worse, history tells the story. And we now know what the data shows us about the fact that there were effective therapeutics, the fact that it was appropriate to be prioritizing seniors and the vulnerable. So, you know, not only was mm -hmm. it wrong for them to try to suppress a opposing viewpoints, the actual data that we now have related to the pandemic demonstrates that these positions they were suppressing, that many of them were actually correct and that the public would have benefited from having them out there and getting the option to make their own choices. Yeah. Now we know a lot of the so-called facts were wrong. So the number one lesson here, the number one lesson for all of us, I don't care how smart you think you are. <laughs> okay. I don't care how ignorant you are. The number one lesson here is just not forget. Do not forget what happened. Just don't forget. Don't forget how you were treated by the Biden administration. Don't forget about all the lockdowns. Don't forget how they treated us. Remember, remember, uh, Americans and people, just people in general, just forget. They, they just forget. They get so busy. Oh, yeah, we, had, we went through that. But no, 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 no. This is not like that. We need to remember what these people have done. We can't let it slide because this is the reason why. They'll do it again. And, and not only will they do it again, they'll do it even harder based on how much you remember. If you show that you don't forget, uh, it's going to make it really hard for them to pull the wool over your eyes again. Don't let them deceive you. This has been Yup, I Said It. My name is Andre. Thank you guys. Like, share, and subscribe to my channel.